Good afternoon, one and all. If, please excuse the late hour of this upload, but I was expecting some news to come in which didn't come in, so I'm going to run with the um, with a transfer rumour show today and tomorrow at about three o'clock I'm going to do a live with Gonzo. So just keep your eyes on the channel. I say about three o'clock. Um, I'm not entirely sure when it'll be, but I am expecting, not because I'm in the know or anything like that, but I'm expecting any more results of any positive COVID test and the implications that may have on the West Ham team to face Wolves. I would expect that to be out either later today or tomorrow. Today I'm going to be discussing Joe Rodden, Antonio Rudiger, Tammy Abraham, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Ross Barkley, anyone that plays for Chelsea, basically. Um, the potential of Chelsea agreeing personal terms with Declan Rice. The general unsettling of Je Declan Rice. Quite, it's going to be a lot to fit into 10, 15 minutes, isn't it, really? I'm not going to discuss the most recent news that we have finally paid up an outstanding debt on Sebastian Heller because I just don't think it's anything to boast about. Apparently we were two payments behind and now everyone's making a song and dance. We've paid it. We should have done. We should have paid it a lot earlier. I don't think it's anything to be proud of. Um, but yeah, anyway, I, I thought I might just mention it because I was critical of us for not paying it. don't know why it's taken us... I don't know why it's taken us so long to pay it. And it would have been really, really interesting, actually, the other day for Jim White to have asked that question. And uh, I'd like to have heard an answer from David Sullivan on to exactly why they haven't been paying Eintracht Frankfurt on time for that. But anyway, I guess we will never find out the answer. But that has now been paid. Right, we're being linked with a whole host of players at the moment. And we'll get onto the Chelsea contingent in a minute because I do think it all feeds into the same, um, the same, the same story, basically. Um, before I get on to Joe Rodden, which is really who I want to talk about, let's just go with Fafana initially. Now, as we understand it, we've made a bid um, for the St Etienne centre half. My immediate thoughts on him are it seems slightly overpriced, I've got to say, judging by the, the small amount of research that I've done, I, I must confess. Um, apparently, Leicester are in for him as well. He looks to be a decent and promising player. From what I can see, he's no nonsense. Um, he's an interceptor. He's a tackler. He's not a particularly technical player. He's fast. He'd be the quickest central defender that we have. He likes the battle. You can understand why Moyes might like him. He clearly likes the duel. He clearly likes the contest. Um, he's not scared to put his foot in. And so on and so forth. But whether we should sort of do all our transfer budget on this one player is another matter. I'd take the interest of Leicester with a pinch of salt. I don't know that they're interested. I don't know that they're not interested, but it would seem to be a negotiating tactic. So um, I do find it interesting that West Ham have put a a timeline, a deadline on when we want to hear back from St Etienne. It's basically, we put a bid in, so if we don't hear back by the end of Friday today, then we're not doing any business. It is interesting we do that on this occasion, but we don't do that with James Tarkowski. We put a bid in for 27 million, leave it a week, say nothing, go back. Make a make a thirty million pound bid. We increase it in increments of three million, and spend a long time between each one. So I I do wonder if this tells a tale of. of this is not the first time we've done this, by the way. Put a deadline um on a player, and uh, I think it certainly happened in the Willie Carvalho case. So I'm not confident of signing this player, regardless of whether you you think we want him or or we don't seriously want him. I do want to get on to Joe Rodden though. Because somebody messaged me, and you'll have to excuse me because you did message me yesterday about it on Twitter, but I'm not on every often. I should have really screenshotted it. But somebody asked me on Twitter about Joe Rodden and said, was this the kid you were talking about last year? And it was. I was talking about um, this guy on, on Cup of Tea uh, about a year ago. And the reason I was doing so was because I just think he's an outstanding young player. In fact, I think he's the best young centre-back around at the moment. I'm not surprised. To put too much pressure on him, crikey! I've had him quite a week. Remember, I talking about Harrison Ashby, and then um, and, and now this guy. He's um, he's quick. He's great in the air. He's got leadership abilities. If you've seen him play, I think he's played four caps for Wales in his first game for Wales. Uh, he was bossing the defence around. Um, he's a good size. He's technically very good. Um, he's really an all-round defender. Let's be fair. Manchester City were in for him. Um, and they, they got Aki instead, and you can understand why they would buy Aki instead. But that's left Joe Rodden at Swansea. Um, during the first game of this season, I think Swansea possibly played Birmingham, something like that. Uh, Joe Rodden got the highest Opta score of anyone in the championship 
that didn't score a goal or create an assist. And, and I know that sounds a little bit tenuous, but it is actually quite important because he is a he is a centre half. Your Opta stats are boosted if you get an assist, if you're a winger or a striker or something like that. But just in terms of Jules one, pass completion, tackles, interceptions, he's a fine player. This is the player we should be going after. And as I say, I don't say it now because it's fashionable. I said it a year ago, which I think is um which I do think is important. Also, Geo featured him a video on probably a few months ago on players that we should really look at getting from the championship. And again, we featured him in that choice of 10. Um, I think David Sullivan, I, I think I'm not speaking out of school here. I think David Sullivan's replied to um, somebody in an email when asked a couple of days ago, if we were interested in Joe Rodden and, and he was, and, David Sullivan replied and said, yes, we're looking at him. We think he could be very good next year. Well, I made this um, I made this comment in the video last night we did on the phone in. We, we don't get a chance next year. Now is the, now is the chance to buy him. Uh, people have mentioned that he's injury prone. Um, the injury he had, the recent injury he had was a metatarsal injury. So it's not like knee ligament damage. I mean, anyone, any one of us could get a metatarsal injury. It's it's. It's not that you're more prone to it than others or anything like that. Some, you know, it's a. You remember David Beckham had that quite famously. It's one of it's one of the bones in your foot. It's one of these bones, and and it breaks, and it's it's easy, but it doesn't mean you're injury prone. So, um, I wouldn't worry about that. He's not Jack Wilshere. So yeah, that's that's the guy I would look to go for. That that, re that really is. Um, going on to the other. It all ties into Declan Rice. I don't want to talk about Declan Rice too much on this because we've we've done it to death, and I also think. We're going to continue to do it to death because I think the story is going to run and run and run. But the the most recent um, report is that Chelsea have agreed personal terms with Declan Rice, and I really don't know what to make of that. And I don't, as I say, I don't want to go into it too long. Otherwise, I'm going to spend the next four or five minutes talking about Declan Rice himself, and I'd rather address the players. Um, I do, I do wonder if there's some unsettling going on. Is all I'll say. But if there is unsettling going on, I do think Declan Rice is a bit above unsettling. He's a very strong-minded character. Declan Rice will leave when Declan Rice wants to leave West Ham, and it's as simple as that. But my belief is, has always been the same. Of course, it's a dream of his to play for Chelsea. I think it's in one's human nature that if someone lets you go, which is what Chelsea did, Chelsea let him go and basically said, you're not good enough. It should put a fire in your belly, and I know it will have done, and it's just human nature to want to turn around and prove those people wrong. And there's no way of proving Chelsea wrong, quite like them letting him go for free, then buying him back for 60, 70 million quid, um, and then putting him in the first team, uh, maybe even putting the captain's armband around him. I I don't know. Was it Aspilicueta? I think possibly was their captain. Well, if he's not featuring in the team, then I'll tell you what, he's going to be a choice. I do, you know, um, if we can... Agree we can make him stay, I say make him stay, persuade him to stay, then quite possibly um, maybe the, giving him the armband might be something that we may choose to do. Um, but it's really the players that are either A, being offered in exchange for Declan Rice. And every time I see one of these reports, be it Rudiger, Abraham, Ross Barkley, I always think it's an exchange, exchange plus some money. Uh, but maybe just maybe we are also interested in these players irrespective of um, of any transfer. So. If a Declan Rice transfer doesn't go through, are we still interested in Rudiger? Well, I think that's the one out of all of them that we should be, because again, it's a very, very good defender. I, I watched him play a couple of times in the flesh. I mean, um, recent years, I've been to Stamford Bridge a couple of times, and um, and whenever I've seen him play against us, he has been the one that that has impressed me. Actually, I thought he's you know big, strong, commanding on the ball, uh, fast, good player, reads the game well. Uh, I, I like I like this player, and make no mistake about it, Antonio Rudiger improves our first team. But I think that's the only one out of them that we would sign. Was there no deal happening with um, with Declan Rice? All the others I think involve Declan Rice in some form or another. Um, it's an easy story to make because of the Declan Rice link. Okay, to link any Chelsea player with West Ham. And everybody's looking for, everyone's looking for stories. So, do you know what? To, to an extent, I do it. I always think, what's my next video going to be for the next day? If, if I'm doing it, just sat in my shed, what's a newspaper report or a radio station going to do? They need to fill newspaper columns. I need to uh, fill radio airtime. I think, so I do think they're easy stories to make, but let's just sort of look at them individually. Tammy Abraham. Um, do I think he could do a job at West Ham? Yes. But I do think he'd be really massively overpriced. 
I do think Chelsea would be looking for sort of 30 odd million for that player. And because he scored goals in the Premier League, let's not forget, he has also scored goals in the Championship as well. But if you. Sorry, if I. Sorry about that. You, you know what I was doing there. Um, what was his name? Ollie Watkins has gone for what, 25 to 30 million, something like that. They're going to want a similar amount for Abraham, who has a proven record already in the Premier League. I do think, I thought he'd do quite well at West Ham. I do also look at him and think, is there room for Tammy Abraham in our squib? Well, not if we retain Sebastian Heller, because I think if Abraham came in and we paid that sort of money for him, um, or we accepted him as 30 million, a 30 million pound part of the 60, 70 million pounds transfer of Declan Rice, um, some, something's got to give. Someone's not playing. And then what you're doing, you're writing off Sebastian Heller. Because if Sebastian Heller don't play this season, he goes from a £45 million striker to a £20 million striker just purely because um well, purely because he's not done he's not done what everyone thought he would do over over two years, It'd be two years of inactivity, so his value will go down. It's as simple as that. Um I can't see it. I can't see the Abraham one. The two that I find most interesting in terms of swapsies, if you <laughs> Expression. I don't know what I said. Swapsies are um, a Ross Barkley and Ruben Loftus cheek. I see a lot of comments where people poo poo this both transfers. Ross Barkley's not done anything at Chelsea. Chelsea a bit of a flop for England, and and a similar thing for Ruben Loftus cheek. I just think Chelsea is so far ahead of West Ham in terms of everything, not just the, the football club itself, but the team. We are not in a position at West Ham to turn down players as good as that. Do not think for a second that Ross Barkley doesn't get into our first team. Because um, we're not... Let's not pretend um, that Paolo Fornals, the fornicator, is better than Ross Barkley. He's not. I mean, he's not. Ross Barkley just gets into our team. And I use that as as one example there. Um I also, I, but the thing that bugs me about this particular one, do, look, do I think Ross Barkley is going to be England's number 10 for the next four or five years? No, I don't, because I do think there are other players like Mason Mount, ironically, who possibly can keep him out of that team. But I think Ross can play a little bit deeper in midfield if he needs to. But then you've got um, Phil Foden and, and all these other players coming through of England. Getting into the England team and getting into the West Ham team are two very, very different things. Um, so I do think he's very, he's more than good enough for West Ham. The one thing that bugs me about this is when David Moyes went to Manchester United, he immediately had thirty million to spend, and he went to Everton. And I remember reading a comment from Bill Kenwright, who is the Everton chairman. At the time, he knew David Moyes. David Moyes gave him a call. Clearly, they knew each other, which was absolutely um, fine. He gave him a call, and he said, "When I heard that David was interested in a player." My immediate thought was, oh, David's come in for Ross Barkley. He didn't. He wanted Fellaini. And in many respects, um, Ross Barkley was far more a Manchester United player than Fellaini ever was. If anyone was going to go in there and start scoring long-range goals and not quite being a Paul Scholes because he was an exceptional player, then it, Ross Barkley was probably more suited. And at the time, he was a young wonder kid coming through. Um, he didn't go and get him. So I do wonder how much David Moyes would want Ro Ross Barkley now. When he actually had the funds to buy him, he, he's not the guy he took from Everton. And he didn't look like any inclination of going back in for him. In fact, he went and got one matter from um, from Chelsea instead. So there's that one. I find it hard to believe that he would be included in any sort of deal. Ruben Loftus-Cheek is, again, is, uh, is its own individual story on that. Um, I remember when we played Chelsea, maybe the season before last... Uh, Declan Rice came up against Ruben Loftus Cheek, and I I'll tell you, Loftus Cheek completely bossed him. I remember doing the review, uh, the review after the game. I remember saying to Gio, I think he's had a really strong lesson here, a really harsh lesson. I think one that will make Declan Rice stronger, and I think it did. I think there's no doubt about it to the point now where it's Ross, um, where it's Declan Rice who's the mainstay in the England team, and not Ruben Loftus Cheek who's struggling to get in the Chelsea team, which is why he's being spoken about as a make weight or being someone that's for sale. But he is a really good player. And I, I, I like speaking about these players particularly because I've seen him play unlike a player like Fofana, for instance, who I haven't. Because I remember seeing, uh, we 
played Crystal Palace away. I remember going to that game. I remember doing a vlog on the game. And Loftus-Cheek was playing in central midfield to them. And I remember saying he he was very impressive on that day. I think I, I, think I said he was... He commanded the centre of the pitch like a like a cruiserweight boxer. I mean, I don't know how tall he's six foot two, six foot three, must be 15, 16 stone. He is a he's an impressive specimen. And I tell you what, he he had good, really good close control. He seemed to have good um awareness to read the game. His passing was good. Um he seemed to provide a goal threat. I would not be adverse to that player coming in at West Ham at all. I think were he to come in, we would still have to address. Declan Rice would still have to be replaced, by the way. He would still have to... Um, we'd still need a, a defensive-minded midfielder. Um, but Ross Barkley, again... Uh, sorry, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, again. Um, look, I don't wish to be harsh, but Mark Noble's not keeping Ruben Loftus-Cheek out of the West Ham first team. Um, so, anyway, if the only trouble with him is... And unlike Joe Rodden, I do believe that Loftus-Cheek may have may have some injury concerns and it does always worry me when people are heavily built um and and because I, I, I said the same about antonio and andy carroll when people are heavily built i do wonder about their ability to recover from injuries it, it's no surprise at all to me that jamie vardy is there's no there's no fat on him there's no meat on him he's skinny he's nothing um, that he's playing as well as he still does. It's also no surprise to me that Ryan Giggs played... Did he play into his 40s? I think he might have done. Again, you still look at him now. He still looks the same. There's no fat on him at all. Um, Teddy Sheringham, for us, I mean, he just carried on carried on playing. And I saw him. I saw him... Um, oh, I saw him at one of the West Ham games. Um, I was quite drunk, actually. But again, he's a skinny guy. Um, these guys seem to do better through injury. They seem to, you know, the bigger you are, the harder you fall in, in that respect, I guess. Um, so I do worry more about a, a thick set geezer like Ruben Loftus Cheek and an injury record. That being said, I was gonna, I was gonna say I would, I would hope um, a medical team would would, <laughs> would bring that up, um, but I'm not completely confident at how how uh, efficient um, that our medicals are. Uh, anyway, there you go. Those are my thoughts on it. What do you think? Joe Rodden, Rudiger, Abraham, Ross Barkley, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, and of course, Fofana over at St Etienne. Uh, be really interested to see what you think. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll do a live from Gonzo. I think I'll do it at three o'clock because I've looked at the games tomorrow and I think that might be the crappiest game. So maybe let's make people watch that. And I think it's on Amazon as well. Uh, so if you want to join me for that, uh, three o'clock live chat. We'll go through uh, any of the latest West Ham news. Obviously, we've got a review going up tonight for the Wolves game, but I do think that might well be subject to change because I'm expecting more news to come out of West Ham within the next 24 hours. So we'll discuss that tomorrow, three o'clock. Come and join me on this channel. Uh, I'll set up the live chat. We'll discuss the latest news. Um, we'll open up a we'll open up the chat for you all to have your own say, and I will look forward to seeing you then.